What's up guys, welcome to another video. And real quick before we get into the video game stuff and what I found at the flea market, and I actually got some pretty cool stuff this week. Anyway, I wanna talk about all the changes that are going on on YouTube, the good, the bad, is my channel affected, is your channel affected? You know, I don't have any of the answers, but I just wanna go over my thoughts real quick. Um, you know, apparently with this whole COPPA thing, advertisers, all right, so there was a big lawsuit. Uh, YouTube got sued, it was a multi-million dollar lawsuit. And it was about people targeting advertisements towards kids and protecting the children of the world. I get that. So basically, after that was all said and done, the changes that are coming because of this are advertisers can't... So pretty much 90% of advertisements aren't going to be aired on videos that target kids. Pretty much, that's the bottom line. And that really sucks for people that do a lot of hard work on their YouTube channels that do kind of target kids, even if it's unintentional. It sucks for channels like that. But I feel like it's going to really make people push patreon and you know i'm against patreon i feel like that's a terrible thing unless you got something set up where all the money goes to a charity you know i'm all for that something you really believe in awesome you know power all the power to you hell i might even donate to it you know but to to fuel somebody's video game collection or just someone that just talks about video games in the basement like i'm not don't donate your money to that that's crazy that is absolutely crazy but I did see things like, you know, the Metal Jesus thing on, on uh, Twitter or YouTube. I forget what I saw, but I heard that he was moving towards uh, Amazon. You know, he's going to Amazon. So I guess he'd have a new revenue stream uh, off Amazon, which I guess is a good thing. You know, if that guy can, you know, put his videos on different platforms and receive ad revenue and, you know, not ask for donations from his audience. I think that's a, a wonderful thing if that's what happens, you know, if that's what happens. But, you know, there, there could be some good things that come out of this. You know, there, di there might be different, um, like I said, avenue streams for different people. You know, I don't know. You know, whether it's putting your content on another platform or it's tailoring your content for YouTube so that you, you can, YouTube <laughs> can run different kinds of advertisements on your videos. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, but the one thing that I really don't like about this whole thing, you know, the, the, the monetization thing and all, you know, I get demonetized, whatever, it's not the end of the world, I don't do this for the money. But what I don't like is if you work really hard on a video and they don't, YouTube, and you can still upload, you know, keep in mind, you can still upload, but if YouTube deems it something that I guess isn't accepted into their system, your, your video is not going to come up in a search result, and that really sucks. You know, I feel like that's terrible for people that put a lot of hard work into their videos, and their videos aren't harmful, and they're not targeting anybody, and they're just, you know, people speaking their mind. You know, it sucks that other people that share the similar interest to those people can't connect via the Google search engine. You know, that's a pretty shitty thing. But those are just my thoughts, guys. Anyway, let's get into some games. All right, guys, this is a combination of GameStop, the flea market, and another retro store in my area. Um, this game, Valfaris, I downloaded this, and don't ask me why. When I find physicals of games that I download, I'm just a sucker for them, and it's just more money that helps the developer and, you know, some money that goes to GameStop, unfortunately. But, you know, this is a really cool uh, run-and-gun shooter uh, action game. Uh, this game is really hard. I think the graphics on this thing are amazing. Awesome sprite work. It's kind of like sprite work slash animation. But, you know, 35 bucks for a physical like this, you know, I'm I'm totally down for that. If this was at GameStop. Like, I saw this up for order on PlayAge's website, and to find this at my local GameStop, I think that's pretty cool, although it was new. And it was like one of those new games that was already open. They open it just to throw it on the shelf. Um, God, I hate that. And no manual, but, you know, whatever, Valfaris. I, I recommend this game for 35 bucks. It's an awesome game. Um, the next thing that I got, I actually got this last week. Uh, but my component cables from my PlayStation 2 took a shit on me, so I had I needed a solution. And one of the retro stores in my area had this thing by Hyperkin. It's pretty much a HDMI cable, I guess, for PlayStation uh, 1, 2. I'm sure you could use this on a PlayStation 3, although I don't know why you'd want to because it has HDMI out. Um, this thing, I will have to say, this thing uh, is is pretty incredible. Now there is a newer iteration of the same product. Then okay, there, all right, so there's a big flaw with this. Okay, the big flaw with this specific model right here is it only broadcasts in 16 by 9 He has 16 by 9 for the PS1, the PS2, which is made for a 4x3 aspect ratio. That does suck. But I will have to say, although it is 16 by 9 the uh, the video quality on this thing is pretty remarkable. Now, this was $30, bucks, um, but there is a newer iteration of this that I believe is the same price. I think it might be like $25 bucks online. I bought this one at the store. 
but there's a switch on this thing, just like there is on other models for like the um, like the Xbox, the original Xbox, the Dreamcast that will do 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Unfortunately, I just got the first iteration of this. That's all they had at the store, and this just does 16 by 9. But again, you know, it, it's still worth 30 bucks in my opinion. But anyway, so here's the next thing that I got, and this kind of goes along with that. I did get a new pair of, I guess, composite yeah, composite cables for uh, my PlayStation 2. Now, this is a pretty, pretty interesting cable here. So this, okay, so this does, or I guess component, not composite. That's what I meant, component. So the uh, left and right audio. And then this, look, not only do you have just the regular component, you have this fourth one right here. What the hell is this? I didn't even, like, I plugged these three. Okay, so I plugged all these into my TV, and it worked fine. I didn't use this. What the hell is this for? Maybe you can let me know in the comments down below. I have no idea. Anyway, so here's a pretty interesting thing about this cable. So you can use this on an original Xbox. You can use this on a PlayStation 1 or 2. And you can use... I don't even know what this is. Something for a phone line right there. I don't know. Is this Wii? Is this Nintendo Wii? I don't know. I mean, what other consoles came out around this generation? Is this Xbox 360? Is it the Wii? I don't know. This is really cool. Um, and, oh, okay, there's a switch right here for TV or HD TV. Okay, so I use these on the uh, on my Japanese PS2 with PS1 and PS2 games, and sometimes you have to use component cables with PS1 games on a PS2. I know it's kind of weird. This one works for both, so this cable is pretty pretty awesome. Um, and I use an Elgato HD to capture footage and stuff like that, so this will work great with that. I'm really happy I got this thing. I knew I didn't know this thing even existed, but if I get an original Xbox and whatever hell system this thing's for, you know that uh, I guess I can use it, but. Okay, so the next thing that I got is this off-brand PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 pad. I guess just I guess this will be a PlayStation 1 pad since there's no uh, dual analogs. I didn't notice that. I'm not worried about that. That's not why I got this. I got this for shooters specifically. Um, yeah, cheap controller, right? It feels cheap. But actually, this thing rocks. Uh, I bought this for shooters. The reason is... As you see, there's a turbo set button on here for these face buttons right here. And the reason I need that is for this PlayStation 1 game right here, 2 Tenkaku, that doesn't have an auto fire option in the game, unfortunately. It really sucks. But this game totally rocks with this controller right here. This controller works really good for shooters. I'm really, really glad I got this controller. So uh, this game is actually playable now. I had a lot of fun with this last night. And I'll probably live stream me playing this game with this controller. And man, this D-pad is, is, God, it's a good D-pad. Like, this controller feels cheap, but when you play a shooter with this thing, this thing rocks. This is an awesome controller for seven, eight bucks used. I mean, it's beat up, but I don't know. I'm a huge fan of this controller. I'm really, really glad I got this thing. And it makes two Tenkaku playable, which makes the controller even better. Okay. Okay, next thing I got the other day. Solar Striker for the Game Boy, uh, you know, as you can, I guess, guess from the little label art right there, this is a shoot 'em up. Um, I played this game for about 20 minutes. I mean, it's a it's an eight dollar game, you know, but it is a shooter, and I collect shooters, so I was I was happy to find that. Unfortunately, I never saw this before. I mean, they never had these in stores in my area, so I was really really glad to pick that up. Um, next game I got is a game called. Dragon Guard, uh, you know, I saw that Square Enix on there, plus this thing was like five bucks. Actually, I haven't even opened this yet. Um, I did play this briefly before. I just got this because it was so damn cheap. God, I can't. God, they put these things on here. I guess you can't steal stuff out of the store. I want to know if this thing comes with a manual or not. We're going to find out together, guys. If, if I can get this bastard open. My God. Alright, well, I'm going to need a new case now. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, no manual. So I paid $5 for a disc and some cover art, and I messed the case up. You know what? I hope I didn't mess up the uh, paper insert there. No, it's good. That's good. Okay. Okay, so yeah, Dragon Guard. Um, this game looked really interesting. It's like a, uh, it's like kind of like a shooter, kind of like Panzer Dragoon. And then there's action RPG elements where you're on the ground and you're running around and you're just hitting stuff. And I, I honestly, I have not played this game yet. I just got this cause it was five bucks. It doesn't have the manual. Unfortunately that sucks, but 
you know, it's five bucks and I can try this game out. And I'm sure if I don't like it, I'm sure one of you guys would buy it off me for five dollars. So yeah, Dragon Guard. I know there's games in the series on like the PlayStation 2, maybe the PS3 that might be, I guess, rare and kind of expensive. I don't know. I don't know much about the series, but okay. So I found this at I found this at Best Buy. Yep, Best Buy. I didn't even know this game existed. Indivisible. I just saw the the cover art. And I looked at the back of the case and saw that action RPG and platforming worlds collide. What? I looked it up online and this game looked really cool. As a matter of fact, this game, and again, I have only played this for a brief period at this point. Um, but so far, this game kind of reminds me of uh, Shantae meets Valkyrie Profile with the turn-based, timing-based uh, combat engine, kind of like, uh, you know, Project Crossing, Super Robot Tizen, OG Saga, Endless Frontier, uh, Valkyrie Profile, you know, even games like uh, Shadow Hearts with the ring system, you know, it's kind of like that turn-based, timing-based RPG mechanics. Um, but, you know, really cool what I played this so far. This game was like 40 bucks, although you can, 40 bucks at Best Buy. You can probably find it online for like 30, 35, but yeah, indivisible. I recommend it, you know, what I played of it so far. You know, kind of pricey, you know, but it's a new game. You're supporting the developer or whatever. I'm sure you can download it too because everything physical is also online. And that is what I have acquired over this past, you know, week, week and a half. So guys, how do you feel about all the crazy changes going on on YouTube? Because as of right now, I haven't logged into my creator studio and done all those questions that it prompts you to answer about, you know, how your videos uh, might target kids and things like that. Let me know in the comments down below, how should I go about answering those questions? Because I mean, honestly, right now, I haven't even checked my analytics to see who primarily watches my videos. Although I'd bet that it's probably not kids because I feel like I don't have kid content. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, then make sure you like the video. And if you like awesome video games, then maybe you might want to subscribe to the channel. Till next time, guys. Peace out.